WOR Mutual, in cooperation with the United States Treasury Department, presents the first American Opera Festival, a new series of full hour presentations of operas by distinguished American composers, sung by American singers, under the direction of the eminent American conductor, Alfred Wallenstein. Our first production is one of the most famous and successful of all American works for the musical stage, George Gershwin's Porgy and Bess. This program, we know, will please you, for it brings to you some of the finest of America's entertainment. But that is not the only purpose. The United States government has asked us to tell you that the monthly investment in war bonds must be doubled. It must be doubled for victory. And your own personal quota should be at least 10% of your income invested regularly in war bonds and stamps. Porgy and Bess, the opening presentation of the first American opera festival, is based on DuBose and Dorothy Hayward's play, Porgy. Mr. Hayward and Ira Gershwin wrote the lyrics and transformed the play into opera form, and as Porgy and Bess, it reached the stage in 1935. It was a success then, and it has been revived this season with even greater success at the Majestic Theater in New York City. The principals and chorus of that Porgy and Bess company have been made available to the First American Opera Festival through the cooperation of the producer of this revival, Cheryl Crawford, and her associate, John Wildberg. Most of these actors and singers created the roles which they sing and play tonight. We shall hear Todd Duncan as Porgy, Ann Brown as Bess, Ruby Elsie as Serena, Avon Long as Sport and Life, Edward Matthews as Jake, Harriet Jackson as Clara, Georgette Harvey as the shopkeeper Mariah, Jack Carr as Crown. The ensemble is the Eva Jesse Choir, the orchestra, the WOR Symphony. This radio adaptation has been written by Gene Dalrymple. Alfred Wallenstein conducts the premiere of the first American opera festival, Porgy and Bess. Porgy was a cripple and a beggar, and he and the goat cart in which he rode were once a familiar sight on the streets of Charleston, South Carolina. In the evening, he'd go home to that waterfront settlement known as Catfish Row. Here he lived alone in the midst of his friends and his neighbors. Some of these, like Mariah, the shopkeeper, Jake, the fisherman, and his wife, Clara, and Robbins, the cotton baler, and his lovely Serena, were good, God-fearing people. But then there were others, like Crown, the powerful, bullying stevedore, and his handsome, swaggering woman, Bess, and Sportin' Life, the sardonic, happy dust peddler. Well, it's here in Catfish Row, one lovely summer evening, that the story begins. Clara, just outside her home, is watching the men gather for their nightly crap game, singing to her baby as she rocks him in her arms.
bone like you. Let me see them die. Hey, Jake, give me back them bones. Them the same cockeyed bones that cleaned the game out last Saturday night. Robin, we'll play with your dice. Robin, honey boy, don't play with that man crown tonight. Nighttime is man's time, Serena. I've got a right to play. Here comes Bess now. Hello, Bess. Hello, sport life. Better get in the game, Bess. You're right, crown. Lord, I am tired this night. I'm done with cotton. Better come along with me on the sea I got room for another fisherman. That suits me. His cotton hook then swung his last bale of cotton. Who wants a cotton hook? <laughs>
I'm going, Bess. Where are you going to hide? Oh, some man's always willing to take care now of Bess. Now, get Bess. this. Whoever he is, he's temporary. I'll be back. All right. All right. I's the only friend you've got left now, Bess. Is that you, Sporting Knife? Please give me a pinch of happy dust. I'm almost dead. Sure, sure. Here you are. Listen, sister. You're going to New York soon. Let me take you with me. Listen, Sporting Knife. I ain't come to that yet. Okay, okay, sister. The cops ain't gonna find me here for no woman. Oh, Mariah, Mariah, please let me in. You done make trouble enough. You better get out before the police come. Oh, God. Ben. I'll hide you out. Who is that, Mariah? I can't see in this dark. That's Paulie. He ain't no use to your kind. He's a good man and a beggar. I don't care. I'm going with him. At least it's a place to hide. This way. Brown escapes, and the next night the people of Catfish Row gather in the widow Serena's room to mourn Robbins and to drop coins in the saucer for his burial.
and vessels are helping him. What's that woman coming here for? She's caused enough trouble already. I don't need your money for the bury my man.
Life begins early in the morning in Catfish Row, and some weeks later, Jake and his fishermen are repairing their nets just outside of Porgy's window. Must see you men done forgot about the fishing. Ain't you know the phrase, God got the block at 10 o'clock? That's right, men. We most forgot about the picnic. Turn out tomorrow morning, and we push the seagull clean to the blackfish bank before he wets the anchor. Hey. Honey, how you think our baby gonna get a college education if I don't work hard and make money? Ain't that right? Oh, I got plenty, nothing, nothing plenty for me. I got no car, got no mule, got no misery. The folk with plenty, plenty, got a lock of the door. For the life of me, what you is hanging round this place for? Why would you look best and your way with the bar? There's big money for you and me in New York. Keep away from my woman or I'll break her darn neck. Uh, I'd like to see you. Hey, 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 let's go, let's go. All right. All right, then you get out of here. All right, all right. There. Your man's friend's coming, they go. But old sport and life, he go on forever. No, <laughs> Bess, no. It's your porgy, but go on forever. Bless you.
the matter, you best? Ain't you know you're going to be late for the picnic? Oh, no, you ain't. You going. Everybody's going. You got to help me with this basket. Why, there's enough here to eat for six. Where's your things, child? Best, I want you to go. You do call me old. Thank you, honey. Yeah. <laughs> What's this talk about staying home when everybody's going to the picnic? On nearby Kitawa Island, the picnic is almost over. The sun is going down, and the loyal sons and daughters of Repent Ye, saith the Lord, are gathered together listening to Sportin' Life, who sings for them as they wait for the boat to come and take them back home. Liable to teach you, you ain't necessarily so. Little David was small, but oh my. Little David was small, but oh my. He caught big Goliath, who lay down and died. Little David was small, but oh my. What do you want? The devil's a villain, but taint necessarily so. To get into heaven, don't snap for seven. Live clean, don't have no balls. Look at me, I just take that gospel whenever it's possible, but with a grain of salt. Methuselah lived 900 years. But who calls that living when no gal giving to no man what's 900 years? I'm preaching this sermon to show. It ain't Nessa, ain't Nessa, ain't Nessa, ain't Nessa. Ain't Nessa, fair on it, so. Here's that boat. The last yes, boat today. seen you, Lan. I've been waiting all day for you. Listen, let me go, Crown, or the boat will go without me. It sure do a lonesome man good to see his woman. Let me go, I say. Listen, Crown, I'm living decent now. <laughs> Please let me go, Crown. <laughs> a big, strong man like you can get plenty of other women. <laughs> what I want with other women? I got a woman, and that's you. See? <laughs>
I know you ain't changed. Oh, you and me, it always be the same. Oh, Come Bob. on, Bess. <laughs> when Bess finally got back to Porgy's house, it was three days later, and she was delirious with fever. Now more than a week has passed, and she is slow to recover. But life goes on in Catfish Row. Jake, sugar, you better finish your breakfast. Honey, that's all the breakfast I got time for. It's getting late, the tide is high, and I'm on my way. Come on, you fishermen. It's time to travel. All right, Jake. All ready, Jake. Let's be on. Come on. Come Goodbye, on. boys. Bye, Mariah. It looks to me like it's going to blow today, fellas. Don't you know that ain't a way to talk for my woman? So long, Cloud. Goodbye, Jake. Gangway for the seagulls. It takes a long boat to get there. It takes a long boat to get there. It takes a long boat to get there. Boat I like to live in the common land. Make her well again. Please, Lord. Oh, Poggy, honey, don't worry. I done prayed for this. Dr. Jesus done took the case. By five o'clock, your woman's gonna be well. Thank you, Serena.
out on that horse along, sister. You got no cause to worry about Jake and the seagull. Oh, Maria, I ain't never seen the water look so black. It's just there waiting, holding its breath. Oh, Lord, I knew it. I knew it. There's a hurricane now. and shows no sign of abating, the people of Catfish Row gather in their fear in the good widow Serena's room so she may lead them in prayer. and say hello to your man. By nightfall, the storm had died down, and the sad and weary people are returning to their own homes in Catfish Row. Good night, sister. What are you going to do 
with that motherly face of his. What I gonna do with him? I gonna keep him. I gonna keep keep Clara's baby till she come back for him. Poor Clara will never come back no more. She drowned along with her Jake and your crown. No, not my crown, Selena. No, not your crown. Forgive me. Good night, sister. Good night. She got one man. Maybe she got him for keeps. When she got two, well, he have to be a cop in. And then the cops come in. Then they takes the leave in. Pretty soon, she ain't got none. Over there on the other side of Walker's house. Who's that? Well, Lord, you're right. It's Crown. <laughs> Crown? I thought you were dead. <laughs> no, honey. Takes more than a storm to kill Crown. Come along with me. No, no. Let me go. Poggy! Get your hands off, Beth. <laughs> I'd like to see a beggar like you make me. <laughs> oh, let go of my throat. Poggy, don't <laughs> Care nothing about seeing him again. Now nah, he's dead. Well, you gotta see him again. You gotta view the body as a witness and tell us who he is. Come on. <sighs> view the body. I can't look at the crown face. Oh. Honey, look. Honey, look. Can't make me look on his face. Ain't nobody can make me look on, look on crown face.
There's a boat that's leaving soon for New York. Come with me. That's where we belong, sister. You and me can live that hard life in New York. Come with me. There we can go wrong, sister. I'll buy you the swellest mansion up on Upper Fifth Avenue. And through Harlem, we'll go spurting, we'll go a spurting, and there'll be nothing too good for you. I'll dress you in silks and satin, the latest. Paris style, and all your blues you'll be forgetting. You'll be forgetting. There'll be no fretting, just nothing but smile. Come along with me, that's the play. Don't be a fool. Come along. Come along. There's a boat that's leaving. For New York, come with me. That's where we belong, sister. That's where we belong. Come on, Ben. later, Porky comes home again. He had refused to look on Crown's body and had been held for contempt of court. But now he's very happy, for his pockets are full of money he won from the jailer shooting craps. And he's brought presents for all his friends and a gay red dress for Beth. Tell me quick, where am I? Been? Ain't we tell you all along, Porgy? That woman ain't fit for you. I ain't asking your opinion. I asking where Beth goes. Oh, Beth, oh, where's my Beth? Oh, somebody tell me where. I care what she says. Somebody tell me where's my bird? 
Yes, going to New York, Porgy. New York. Where's that? Way up north, Porgy. About a thousand miles from here, sir. Past the custom house. Oh, bring my goat. Why are you going, Porgy? And you say best gone to New York. That's where I'm going. performance of Porgy and Bess was conducted by Alfred Wallenstein, who will conduct all of the broadcasts in the first American Opera Festival. The radio adaptation of Porgy and Bess was prepared by Gene Dalrymple, and the production of this broadcast was under the direction of Frederick Bethel. This is National and Inter-American Music Week. When you hear an outstanding musical event on the radio, think of it as a benefit for our fighting men, and pay your admission by purchasing an additional war stamp. That would be, of course, in addition to your regular investments in war bonds and stamps. The most vital investment of your life, for it is your investment in victory. Let that be a fixed item in your budget. At least 10% of your income invested regularly in United States war bonds and stamps. Six other American operas are to be heard in this festival, broadcast over most of these stations on Thursday evening from 8 to 9 Eastern War Time. Next week, Mr. Wallenstein... We'll conduct The Devil and Daniel Webster by Stephen Vincent Benet and Douglas Moore. Your announcer, Joe Ripley. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.